I am joined by the Imo State Governor and candidates of the All Progressives Congress APC, Senator Hope Zedima, for discussion on the state governorship election and matters arising. Your Excellency, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Great to have you on the program. So it's less than uh, 48 hours to the governorship election in Imo and two other states. How has the campaign been? Well, it's uh, very interesting, uh, though very stressful, but interesting and encouraging because of the response and the enthusiasm we got from the field. So, so far, so good. All right. So you dropped your deputy, Placid Njoku, uh, to pick a woman, Chiyere Komaru, as running mate for this election. I would like to know what informed that decision. Well, uh, among other factors, uh, gender inclusion and uh, also uh, even representation of both the male and female interests in the polity. And also recognizing the fact that women really are also committed stakeholders in the society who wants they take up a project, uh, bring seriousness to beer, and also shows commitment to the project. So apart from being a lawyer, what stands her out amongst other, other persons you could have considered? Yeah, she is actually loved by ma many, and also a committed member of the Anglican Communion, and uh, also a lecturer with uh, Avani Koko University of Education. And uh, over the years, has worked very uh, well with uh, not only her husband, who is also a senior advocate of Nigeria and uh, a very successful lawyer, have also carried herself very well, that she has this tremendous goodwill that follows her everywhere she go. And once given an assignment, does those jobs with commitment. And uh, the Imo women, as a matter of fact, likes her. So choosing her as my running mate will enhance the prospects of the ticket and also will encourage the more women in Imo State to join our campaign and uh, our government. All right, so let's get to some of the intriguing factors ahead of this election. Uh, there is this fear of violence about the election in Imo State. How would you describe the temple uh, now with less than 48 hours to the election? I lost you. I don't know whether you can hear me. I can. All right, let's take a break and I and will be right back. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Politics Tonight, and thank you very much for staying with us. On the program tonight is the Imo State Governor and candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Senator Hope Uzodima. Your Excellency, before we went on that break, I wanted us to talk about some of the intriguing factors ahead of this election, one of which is fear of violence about the election in Imo State. How will you describe the tempo now with less than 48 hours to the election? Your Excellency, did you get that? All right, let me repeat that question. Uh, there is this fear of violence about the election in Imo State. How will you describe the tempo now uh, with less than 48 hours to the election? I had 48 hours to the election. All right, I may have to increase my voice. Uh, 
There is this fear of violence about the election in Imo State. So I'm asking, how will you describe the tempo now with less than 48 hours to the election? Fantastic. If, if, if the security situation in Imo State has been professionally managed by security agencies in Nigeria. As a matter of fact, our people are so enthusiastic, activities are bubbling in Imo State, and our people are expectant, waiting for Saturday to come so that they can come out and vote, cast their votes. The unfortunate incident of the past, that we are insecurity, mostly politically contrived insecurity, greeted Imo State, and so many people died in the process, buildings and properties destroyed, sponsored by the so-called opposition parties, uh, is now a thing of the past. So we are here, uh, from what we have seen, INEC looked very prepared. Security agencies are also prepared. As of this afternoon, all the materials for the election have been deployed to the various local government areas. And the staff of INEC have also been posted to the polling uh, local government areas. So we are waiting for Saturday to come so that our people will come out and cast their vote. So we are very confident from what we have seen that we'll have a very free, fair, credible, and transparent election. So in the last uh, governorship election in Imo State, it took efforts of the court for you to get your mandate. How confident are you about outright victory this time? Uh, in 2019, it was a very bitter experience where votes cast in 388 polling units, my area of strength, where people voted for me, but the results were excluded. It took almost nine months litigation, going from one court to other, until finally we got to Supreme Court, where the results of those polling units were brought back to count, and then declaration made by the Supreme Court. Going forward, that is a very big lesson, a bitter one for that matter. This time around, my political party, All Progressive Congress, would we'll deploy credible party agents to all the polling units where we will amend our votes, follow up through to the collection center, ensure that the result at the polling unit that was announced is the, will be entered into the collection, a world collection center result, from world collection center to local government collection center up to the state. We are going to be very vigilant will not allow the mistake of the past. That is why I thank the Almighty God for making this day possible. Today, as we speak, the propaganda, the social media propaganda, media blackmail. This is an opportunity now to show whether Hopu Zodema won the election of 2019 or not, whether Hopu Zodema is loved by his people or not. Saturday, by the grace of God, we determine that because my people will come out again in mass to vote for the man they trust, the man who from 2020 to date have shown the difference. The narrative have changed. The public, the absolute lack of confidence, uh, confidence has been restored back to government, and government is once more being appreciated in the state. So as a sitting governor who is seeking a second term in office, why do you think you deserve to be re-elected? Well, if you know where we are coming from and where we are now, in 2019, or when I came 2020, you know, everything, it was like Imo State was broken down. Things fell apart. The center couldn't hold. There was no road, accessible road. The education system collapsed. The health, cent health sector collapsed. B business activities crumbled. 
So I came with a new initiative, with my three R mantra, which is rehabilitation, reconstruction, and recovery. I started rebuilding the roads, quality roads. Started rebuilding the health facilities, rebuilt the school system, brought back uh, public confidence to governance, restored the dignity of civil service, restored the payment, the regular payment of salaries, took care of my pensioners, created a social order that allows people to go about their businesses until the unfortunate incident of banditry, insecurity, unknown government, and other forms of criminality started in Imo State. So Imo people are very excited. They are waiting, they are waiting for Saturday to come. I'm, I'm confident, going by the number of endorsements and the enthusiasm I've seen on the faces of Imo people, I'm very confident that my party, All Progressive Go uh, Progress, Congress, have performed even beyond expectation. But Your Excellency, what would you say uh, are the biggest achievements of your administration? Yeah. What I will say, really, is what I call mentality change. Before I came, People lost confidence. What belongs to government seems to be what belongs to nobody. There was absolute lack of order, total disorder. As a matter of fact, it was difficult for people to move from one point to another point. Farmers were crying. Business activities were crumbled. I recall with sadness how an attempt by some of my aides to buy food items from relief markets, how they couldn't access relief market for more than three hours, how almost before you to get to relief market, you need a canoe to go in there, how all the roads in a worry, the capital city, were destroyed, how the whole industries in Imo State were destroyed, how nothing, things were not working. Now, I identified after a proper assessment the things that were needed. The first thing I established was to make movement possible. I discovered three major rules, which I consider the core economic arteries if Imo State must function. To move from urban center in Olu to over the state capital, that used to take two to three hours. I did a, a dualized quality road of world-class standard. Now, to move from Oluto to Owere, you can do it under 30 minutes. To move from Okiwe to Owere, which before I came was impossible to do under three, four hours. You can now do in 40 minutes. From Umuahia to Owere, the same thing. I also recognize that there was this huge youth unemployment which led to all forms of criminal activities. Crime rates grew astronomically. What did I do? I created jobs through empowerment of our young men and women. I trained different people on different skills. I introduced the Emo Skill Up program. I graduated the first cohort, 5,000, second cohort, 15,000, only last week, we have admitted 40,000 youths. So far, our target is to graduate 300,000. We've done very close to 100,000 digital and non-digital skills acquired by our people. So we have done a lot of things. I have recovered so, so many industries that we were lost before this time. And through that, we created jobs. I established, we have now three universities. The two additional universities, apart from that, it will ease admission problems that have greeted our youth population. It will also create jobs and develop the communities where these schools are cited. So as, as a matter of fact, there are so many things to remember why Hopu Zodema should be re-elected by Imo people. And I'm not disappointed. 
Because every day, speaker after speaker, encomiums, endorsements, excitements, enthusiasm is what is greeting my campaign. From one local government to another local government, you will hardly know the difference. So Imo people are very excited, they are very appreciative. Apart from a few disgruntled and bitter politicians who are in the opposition, who chose to do their own campaign on social media, using blackmail as the only instrument they have. Right. So having said all that, I want us to focus on infrastructure development, uh, which is uh, very critical, which is a critical component to the development of any nation or, or, or state. Right, so what plans do you have to raise the bar during your second term? Yeah, honestly, what the second term will give me opportunity to consolidate. I've just mentioned the major economic uh, uh, roads in Imo State that before this time were broken down, which I have recovered. All I will do is to move further into the hinterlands, to take care of the rural roads, to boost agricultural activities, to enable rural farmers to bring their produce to the urban centers for, uh, to sell. And then I will also modernize the primary health care. Currently, we enjoy free medical social ins uh, insurance. Our health insurance program, which we have just perfected recently, will be expanded from the formal sector to the informal sector in a manner that it, uh, we will make medical services affordable and available to our people. I will also upgrade all our tertiary and secondary institutions to make education affordable for our people. Quality education, the word quality education. I will increase and stimulate the economic activities. When I came in 2020, we had an internally generated revenue profile of less than 500 million naira. As I speak to you, we do very close to 3 billion every month, still work in progress. By the time our land administration system is properly automated through ages, we will earn more revenue. I will work hard to offload those below the monthly income of 100,000 naira from our tax, uh, tax net as a way of stimulating economic activities. I will create incentives that will make investors want to invest in the Imo state by issuing things like tax holidays, emphasis status to new industries, and ensure that economic activities and return on investment will be very attractive to do business in Imo state. So there's so many things. When I came, we have no, there was no document guiding the location of industries. I perfected an industrial policy, working in partnership with UNIDO. And today we have a policy framework governing a location of industries in Imo state. And I have visited every sector of the economy, oil and gas, agriculture, and, uh, and the social services. Imo state is known for its tourist attraction. I will encourage the operators of hotels in Imo state not only to upgrade the quality of service and infrastructure, to make sure that they are properly patronized by those visiting Imo state as a choice. Before I came in 2019, I launched a manifesto to Imo people. I'm happy to inform you that everything contained in the manifesto of 2019, I achieved very close to 89%. So what I'm coming now to do, if re-elected, is to stabilize and sustain all those things that I've achieved in my first term. And I'm very happy that reactions from Imo, state, Imo people, very, very encouraging. So we'll, we'll come back to that. But your party, the APC, will contend uh, with strong opponents in PDP and Labour Party. How confident are you about your party's chances? There is only one party in Imo State, APC and others. There used to be PDP here, but it's no more. The uh, Labour Party is not... Uh, you have seen what is happening. The Labour Party, as I speak to you, we don't know where their office is. We have not seen their offices. We don't know who is the candidate. In one breath, they tell you it's Mr. B. In another breath, they tell you it's Mr. C. So this kind of confusion is what will usher a government. 
And you see candidate, who, those who say they are candidates of a party whose business is to shout, shout, lament. I believe in conversation. I need to see political opponents or practitioners who will uh, be humble enough to discuss, to discuss and do take to conversations. When I have not seen anybody really, I have not seen anybody contesting the election apart from what I see and read in the social media. I invite you to come to Imo State and find out for yourselves how to, the situation of things. Imo State is already on auto cruise. Because of my administration, with the support of my political party, the All Progressive Congress, that is the only party to beat in Imo State. I'm not giving to psycho fancy, exuberance, and all sorts of all manner of things that I read on social media. But I'm a realist, and strategic communication is the best form of communication. Come and see the difference. All you ask, where were, where were we before 2020, and where are we now? That's how to assess things. Not by hearsay, calling people, oh no, you embark on campaign of calumny, you blackmail people just because you are looking for power. You forget God. You lie. Fallacies here and there. That is, I'm not, I'm not, I spend my time on quality things that will benefit the people, value addition. I appreciate the situation where we add value to issues or wherever we find ourselves. So Imo State has been recovered. Imo State is being reconstructed. Imo State is being rehabilitated. And if I have the opportunity, by the grace of God, to be re-elected, I'm sure I'll get to the, my destination before the end of my second term. All right, so let's now get to some of the issues that have been raised against your government. Opposition parties accused your government of intimidation ahead of this election. How will you react to that? You know, Africa is a very interesting place. Sometimes you look at people wanting to give a dog bad name to hang the dog, an innocent dog that has done nothing. I don't know the meaning of intimidation. I'm already in position as the governor of Imo State, and everybody who knows me knows that I'm a very humble person. I am God-fearing. I am a Christian. So how will I change overnight at this age? Rather, all I plead every day is for my people to come together, let us build the only state we can call our own, Imo State. No one man can do it alone. I need the contribution of everybody in Imo State, whether you are from here or you are, you are just a resident, to join hands for us to build this state, a God-given state, state, endowed with the bounties of nature, natural resources, that creative thinkers will come here, show leadership, and then uh, stimulate uh, uh, activities that will boost our economy. So I don't think that I'm given to intimidation. I, I'm 24 hours busy in office. Since I joined the office, I have only traveled outside the country twice for medical reasons, just for medical checkup. I work from morning to night. What I want to hear, what makes me happy, is to see that the rules are good, my people are happy. I derive my happiness from the happiness of my people. So when my people are not happy, I'm not happy. When they are happy, I'm happy. That's how I get my fulfillment. I feel fulfilled. So I want to restore Imo State to the path of greatness so that my people can move. So all those allegations false, based on falsehood, just all those blackmail based on falsehood, I don't want to be distracted by that. But at the end of the day, history will vindicate me. Still on these issues, and most recent is this uh, feud between the state government and organized labor over alleged un unpaid salary. Uh, what's the true picture of things? There is no feud between Imo state government and organized labor. There is an attempt to fac factionalize organized labor in Imo state. And in the process, I think they are, about, they are creating factions. Government has no, uh, no 
link with what is happening there. But there is an ugly coincidence, which naturally should have been a thing of joy, that he must state government produced president of Nigerian Labour Congress. And that is supposed to be an advantage. But somehow now it is becoming an, a disadvantage because the national, the president of Nigerian Labour Congress now left the entire job he's supposed to do in Abuja and is interested on how the Labour Party will produce a governor in Imo State. And he's not doing it the right way. And the Labour Union in Imo State said, no, we like what our governor is doing. We are not quarreling with our governor. I challenge Joa Jero, if there are people that the Imo State government is owing salary, he should publish their names. Who is the complainant? Who is complaining? I preside over a subnational government. I'm not controlled by the leadership of Nigerian Labour Congress in Abuja. I, the workers who are my workers here are happy with me. They have passed vote of confidence on me. They have endorsed me. Every day they are campaigning for me to be re-elected. Why should I have a problem with such a group? All right, so your excellency, you're saying on live television now that no worker is being owed in Imo State. I did, I did the automation of the nominal role of Imo State Civil Service. And this automation governed by biometric capture. Apart from few number of people where discrepancies exist, Cases like those who are earning double salaries or salaries in three places over the past five to ten years. Because of such discrepancies, there is a lien. And the special committee has been set up. Some of them have confessed to the crime and even has committed to such monies being deducted from their salaries. But because of the recent subsidy removal, I decided to plead with my cabinet for us to let what has happened to have a go, and then for these people to start receiving back their salaries. And that is just what we did. I have a head of service. He cannot lie against his workers. I have a labor union here, of course, every day, who are full of accolades for me. So what is this case George J. Rowe is saying? Who are these people that I'm owing? If they are human beings, they should come out. I have a website, and in that website, our nominal role is there. Assess our nominal role. Get a name in that nominal role that will raise his hand and said he's being owed. So we're not owing any salary. Let's ask any in the judiciary in Imo State. When I came in 2020, they were owed 23 months salaries. Under nine months, I paid complete all their salary arrears. They are, they are living witnesses. So this gang up, this conspiracy to blackmail my administration, to be able to advance an interest, which I, I don't know whose interest it is, is being resisted. Unfortunately for them, I'm an experienced politician. And I believe in the rule of law. So what they think that will be a problem for me, for me it's not a problem. If we were the governor of Imo State and the lucky to have president of Labour Congress of Nigeria come from your state and there is a Labour issue, and that president, assuming somebody reported to him, is not in position to place a phone call to his brother and his governor to find out the other side of the story. Rather, he sit in Abuja and said, I'm removing the labor union. I'm going to put my cousin as chairman of Kataka. And all sorts of selfish things, interests, with no regard to me, no regard to my office, no discussion. No room for dialogue. Haba. 
what kind of administration is that? But your Excellency, is there any effort on the part of the government to reach a truce with Labour? I'm asking this question because earlier today there was a protest in Abuja on this account, alleging that the NLC president was brutalized by your government. There you are. Protest in Abuja. Is Abuja in most state? Well, if I, I deal with Imo workers, I don't deal with Abuja workers. And Imo workers are happy. And Imo workers have written to the national leadership of Labour to inform them that they are happy with the government of Imo state. And they have a cordial relationship. And they are being forced to go on strike. And for over eight months, they continue to maintain they will not strike against a government that has done nothing to them. And that is the reason why they should be dissolved. And the caretaker who will come and be a rubber stamp and be used by opposition against my government installed. But is there any effort? Well, uh, I, 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 believe, I believe in God. Right. But is there any effort on the part of government to reach a truce with labor? Which, the labor I know is even to Nigerian Labor Congress, Imo State Chapter. I talk with them every day. Two days ago, they, they addressed a press conference. And they told the whole world that they have no problem with me. And that they have my relationship is very cordial, a cordial one. So which labor, again, do you want me to discuss with? I don't control federal workers. I'm not responsible for welfare of federal workers. For instance, the only strike that is, the only action that is working here is a blackout. The switch of electricity in Imo State because the state government don't control electricity. But assuming that these people are God-fearing, shorting electricity supply from Imo State, how will it affect the sitting government? Why are you punishing the innocent masses, citizens of Imo State who are your brothers and sisters? You are putting hardship on them. How would that affect the comfort of the governor who can run 24 hours on the generating set? Something is wrong somewhere. All right. So let's move on to administration and preparation of, uh, on the part of INEC ahead of this election. How will you describe uh, INEC's preparation? Honestly, so far, arising from the various stakeholders meeting we had with INEC and security agencies, from what they have said, I, I can see that INEC, they are very prepared, and the security agencies are also prepared. And what is more, our people are very enthusiastic, and the confidence level I have seen from my people to INEC is very encouraging. So we do hope that on Saturday that our people will have the opportunity to come out and cast their votes. So some political parties in Nemo State uh, are accusing INEC of planned manipulation. I mean, they even called for redeployment of uh, REC. How will you react to that as well? My sister, in a government of football, where two teams are supposed to play, and the referee has not started. Match has not started. One team will start to change the referee. Change the, something is wrong. I'm not a prophet to know what INEC has in mind, but I believe that INEC has integrity. And the arrangement I've seen on ground points to the fact that they are ready to conduct an election. I'm a candidate in that election, and my political future is also in that election. I have not seen anything wrong. And I cannot cry foul for things that are, are, are not in existence. So I believe that INEC will do a very good work. And my people are there. And what is more, election, INEC is just coming to conduct the election. Every political party is given opportunity to bring a party agent from the polling unit to the World Collection Center, to the local government collection center, up to the state. So all the political parties are given equal opportunity, equal number of party agents to observe and monitor the elections. 
The, the problem, I think, here, yeah, some people are already envisaging that they will lose. So the agony of defeat can also uh, cause some problems and uh, uh, on discomfort here and there. So but I think people should believe in God and then commit the victory on defeat to the hands of God. Your Excellency, uh, the Labour Party candidate has vowed to defeat you in this election. He was here on Politics Tonight saying there is nothing for you in Imo State. He was here saying there is nothing for you and your party in Imo State. Are you not worried that he could spring a big surprise? My sister, are you not supposed to know that only God can speak in that manner? No, how can I say I will defeat, I will do this, I must do that, I must do that. I am not God. I pray that God should favor me with victory. And if it, in the wisdom of God it is not proper and right for me to win, I will also plead that to God. But I can't come and say, I must do this. I will kill. I must do that. Those are not for man. Those were, that kind of language, only God can do, say that. So I know, I wish him his luck, but I don't pray that he will defeat me. I pray to God to make me win, and I believe that God will make me win. All right. So you and um, other candidates of the major political parties were absent at the signing of the peace accord. Uh, why this? I actually, it was not deliberate. I had a, a meeting with the clergy in Olo, outside the world. And what I did was allow my deputy governorship candidate to represent me at the peace accord with my party chairman to be able to engage over 420 Catholic priests in the meeting I had just uh, yesterday. So it was not deliberate. I have a lot of respect to due process. I believe in the rule of law. And, uh, and of course, the, the, that committee, the, the uh, Bishop Cooker committee, they have done so well. Recall their role in 2015. Recall also their role in past elections. Uh, they, they, as a matter of fact, need to be encouraged and supported. Right, so how confident are you that uh, there will be no violence on election day? No, you see, um, from the point of view of my religion, because I'm a man of faith, and faith actually as defined in the Bible, uh, what you don't see yet, you believe in it. So I believe and praying God that we have worked so hard that we need a peaceful environment for the election. And I pray that God will touch the heart of those who are up for mischief to repent. And the security agents, agencies that have also braced up. I saw the way they have deployed in Imo State. And, uh, by the grace of God, election will be peaceful. All right, let's talk about insecurity, which according to you is the biggest burden of your administration. How is this being tackled to ensure safety on election day and beyond? Yeah, the uh, insecurity is probably uh, is being addressed now with the kind of attention it, des it deserves. Apart from the kinetic approach, the non-kinetic approach is also working. Only two days ago, some of those boys, the bandits, surrendered their arms, confessed to the crimes, and also uh, mentioned names in the past that have supported them and funded them. And uh, as I speak to you, they are now, they've been taken to a rehabilitation center uh, where treatment is being given to them. You know, and more and more we are going that manner. You know, I, I told you earlier on in this program that some of the issues or insecurity that we had here were contrived by politicians. There are some group of boys who were into agitation of Biafra, the IPOB. Some people caught into it. Some politicians caught into it and then imported the bandits into the state just to make Imo State ungovernable for my administration. 
unknown to many of my people then that the mischief was just targeted at me. Uh, they got some tacit support. But now God already exposed them. And the more people are now aware. And they have reason to condemn it. And so I think, look at the one boy called Simon Eba in Finland. Issuing order that our people should sit at home. So businesses should close. It doesn't matter to him whether our people will live or whether they will die, whether everything will be destroyed. All he needs is that people should sit at home. He's an agent. He's being used by some people against the interests of my people. I pray God will forgive him. So finally, before I let you go, uh, there is so much talk about the Charter of Equity. What's your position on it? Yeah, Charter, before this time, you know, there had been too much acrimony and crisis whose zone should produce governor. And it has been survival of the fittest all the way. In the process, you will get enmity out of it. You will get discriminatory activities from uh, people here and there. And then when I came here, I saw that in Ibia State, there is already a zoning formula and is working. In Anambra State, there is a zoning system where power now rotates. Enugu and Ebo instead. Imo State is the only state in the whole of Southeast that has not included conventionally, by convention, rotation as a way of uh, producing leadership. So I come from a low zone with 12 local governments out of 27. Meaning that all you need from all the ones they want to be a governor, come out from all and get a deputy who will give you one local government, and you will become the governor. But when we talk about equity and being your brother's keeper, we need to create stability where one particular senatorial district will not continue to produce a governor. So the elders of the state approached me and conceived the idea of charter of equity. And I bought into it. The reason being that by so doing, the power will not go around. The governor will come from Olu after Olu, he will go to where after where it will go to Okigwe. It, and that is not going to happen without considering merit. But I believe that there is no kind of human being you are looking for that to be a governor you will not see in this senatorial district. So for inclusiveness, for, for equity, for justice and fair play, we should be our brother's keeper. So I signed into that document, meaning that by the time I finish, we expect that the next governor will come from the other senatorial district. And when the person finishes, he will not go to Okigwe. And that way there will be peace and harmony, and we will live together as brothers and sisters. So I urge every reasonable mind to encourage it so that it will at least allow our people flow politically without uh, uh, discriminations in our daily lives. All right. So lastly, what's your message to Imo people ahead of Saturday's election? My message to my people, they saw where Imo State was before I came in 2020, January, and they have seen for themselves what I was able to do despite all attempts to distract me, despite the level of insecurity, despite the hostility by opposition party. And this is what I've done. And they have told me several in different places, commending my activities. It means that if I'm given the opportunity to do my second term, I will not only stabilize what I have achieved, I would have taken him state to the po a position, to that enviable height, where Imo will be cherished by all of us, where our heritage, our common patrimony, will be treasured, and where they can be their chest and say, I am proud, coming from Imo state as a citizen. So I urge them to go out in mass on Saturday to cast their vote for me and my party, All Progressive Congress. 
because we shall never, never take their support for granted and will never disappoint their expectations. Thank you. All right. Uh, Your Excellency, Governor of Imo State and candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Senator Hope Zuchman. Thank you so much for joining us on Politics Tonight. And we wish you the very best on Saturday. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you very much for watching. The marks the end of today's episode of Politics Tonight. But the conversation continues from here. Get in touch with us on Twitter at TVC News NG and at Olajuwoke, using the hashtag Politics Tonight. Good night.